name is Carolyn Rattery. I am an actor, writer, and director based in the Southern California area. I'm also a professor. I teach acting and I direct over at Pomona College. And currently I am doing my one woman show called Both And, a play about laughing while black at the Boston Court Theater, which I hope you can check out. Where did Both And come from? That is a multi-pronged question. Um, both and. I guess I'll start with the fact that it came from me as a African American uh, woman, cisgendered woman, queer woman, black person living in the United States of America and uh, it came from the fact of having a mother and a father like I did who were very committed to the um, to, to black education and to uh, black independent thought and radical thought and um, and how as I saw as I was growing up and and from my own experiences from that positionality that it is a violent place to live in the United States because of all of the isms, the racisms, the sexisms, the homophobia, all of the things, right? And so how, as a human who holds multiple identities, how do I still maintain access to the full breadth of my humanity, of my joy, of my passions, while navigating uh, a system that is seemingly hell-bent on truncating self and cutting off expressions of self. Um, there's this trope of the strong black woman and, and, and with that there comes this struggle to, to live and to access vulnerability, to live and to access my softness. So this both and idea comes from the ideas as a human I am both everything, I'm, I'm and. I, I don't want to live in a truncation of self, I want to exercise and affirm our right to, to be all of the things, soft, vulnerable, silly, idiotic, super smart, intellectual, all of the things. It's the both and. And so that is the kernel of the idea. Um, and this show comes out of that. It, it honors that necessity to live in the both and. The laughter comes because of there in the in the play there is this clown energy and i know black folk and clown do not always get along but in the play i posit this idea that there's actually a god of laughter that this idea of this clown energy doesn't belong to the europeans it doesn't belong to like barnum and bailey circus with the red nose and the white face this energy of clown is a divine energy that has been with all humans from the beginning of time. There are so many indigenous cultures that have a trickster, um, a trickster energy, a trickster god, a, tr a, tr a, tr a trickster deity as part of the origin story. And and so, what does that mean? That means that that it is a it is a human right. It's a it's a it's a thing that belongs to all every peoples of the world that, that this access to to this entity that pushes boundaries, that invites us to, to not take ourselves too seriously, this energy that, that pokes at the status quo and reminds us as a community um, to, to let go, to fall into to laughter, to be healed by laughter, to be... So, so this play has that energy, that, that character. Um, and in the beginning moments of the play, I, I posit that this energy has been with black people from the beginning. It was with us in the Middle Passage, but um, because of the hardship of the Middle Passage, these gods of survival had to rise up as well. Um, which means that and, that, and this is where it kind of links to that idea I was just speaking about, you know, as a black person living in the States, I might feel like I have to truncate my silly maybe around white people or around the white gaze because I can't afford to be seen as, as anything less than just being completely on point and having my shit together all, you know, on lock. Um, but this, this, this exercising our, our muscle to this divinity, this god of laughter as a way of survival, as a way of, of, of tapping into a wellspring of joy. And, I, and that's really what this is about. No matter what is going on in life, how do I make a pathway back to my joy?
period. The first time we did this run through, uh, like the first time we actually like put it together and did a run through beginning to end of the whole show, after it was done, I fell out. I was so exhausted. And the artistic director of the theater, Jessica Kubzanski, and my director, the amazing Andy Chapman, they both said, you will get your marathon legs eventually. Like it's gonna be taxing. There's a lot of breath support that's needed to get through this immense amount of, of text. Um, but eventually the body learns, like an athlete, to, to, to hey, we're gonna go for this hour and a half. Um, so before, you know, last fall, I was like, I gotta work out, you know, and I love doing CrossFit exercise. I, lo I love high intensity, and I was like, great, this is gonna expand my breath capacity. I, this is gonna be no problem. But by the time I got to doing this show, I was like, <gasps> it's like I hadn't worked out at all. But after we did run after run after run, eventually, it became a manageable thing. So um, this show does require a tremendous a lot of concentration and I do have a, a nice long period before eight o'clock before the show goes up of just being with the script, of visualizing the story and just getting my body prepped to do this marathon. And I do have to drink two times the amount of water that I normally drink and I'm very careful about what I eat on my show days just because I don't want to be coughing all day or like you know clearing my throat for the whole two hours so it is it is a comprehensive awareness of oh yeah how do I treat my body so that it can perform at maximum capacity I teach acting um, over at Pomona College to undergraduates I teach a beginning acting class I also teach a beginning acting class that's geared toward black theater and it brings in a lot of black folks across the whole five, um, the 5C five campus. So not just Pomona College, but it's, it's a part of a consortium of Harvey Mudd and Pitzer and Scripps. And um, I have to say, I've taught that class maybe three times now, and each time it's been filled with majority black students. And it is so rewarding because those students are like, oh, we're at a primarily white institution, but to be able to be in a class that's predominantly black folk talking about black theater, it is so rewarding to just see people waking up into their voice and to their physicality and to their awareness of their emotional states. Like that's, you know, and, and my show is about joy, but my pedagogy, how I deal with students and how I teach acting is also about joy and about being silly. So it's just a beautiful thing to be in a safe space with a bunch of black folks to just be able to like let go and, you know, moo like cows or scream or have a tantrum and just, and just have fun. And uh, quite a few students have been like, oh, I want to try to pursue this. This is kind of, this is neat. So that's been a really special, special part of it. Oh, please come and check this story out. I guarantee you it will be an unforgettable night at the theater. The play is both and, a play about laughing while black. It runs now through um, May 22nd. It got extended by one week here at Boston Court. We had a Black Affinity Night uh, here a couple weeks ago where it was just mostly, it was, it was filled with black folks and I was telling the story. It was the most fun. We, because this is a story for black folk. It was for everyone. There's a lot of different access points. Um, but it is, it was so rewarding to just be in that space and, and tell this story for my community. So please come out and support. I guarantee you, it will move you.